Hey guys, and welcome to the next set of anatomy notes. Today is going to be all about the muscular system, what different types of muscles are, how they work together to move bones around our body, and what types we have control over and which ones we don't. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the notes. So like I said, today is gonna to be all about the muscular system, the different muscles and areas of muscles that we have in our body and how they interact with each other to cause movement of different types. So the muscular system is a really extensive system of tissue all around our body. Almost half of our body weight comes from the muscles that make up our body. So the other half is all your organs, bones, fluids, stuff like that. Musculars on their own is a half. There are tons and tons of different muscles in the human body. We're not really gonna get into a lot of details about the different ones, but there's over 650 different muscles. They are what work with the bones to give us our shape. So without our muscles, our skin would basically just look like a skeleton with skin stretched over it. So the muscles are what actually give you definition and then one thing that you might not think about is that muscles produce a lot of our body heat. So we mentioned in an earlier set of notes about the digestive system, that digesting stuff provides a lot of heat for our body. Muscles provide a lot of heat for our body as well. Every time that you move your muscles, you're creating energy that the muscles use and burning off that energy creates a little bit of heat. So there are three main functions of the muscular system. We have the movement of our body, probably the one that people are most common with and that you immediately think of when you think of the muscular system. We have the form and the shape of our body. So your posture, your ability to stand up, um, how your arms and your legs and your back look, all of that is determined by and third, like I was just talking about, body heat and internal temperature. So humans have to keep our internal body temperature at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, a couple degrees above or below that, and you're in some serious trouble. So muscles are one of the ways that we help to make sure that we don't go too far below that. By using our muscles, we generate heat, and that's what keeps our internal body temperature at the right level. So like I said, there's over 650 muscles in the human body, tons of different groups from your shoulders and arms. There's lots of muscles along your sides and then your abs right down here. Tons of these muscle fibers throughout your legs and your hamstrings as well. So all sorts of different muscle groups that basically fall right underneath your skin. So it basically goes your skin on top that wraps around your muscles and then your bones are underneath that. So the main thing that we're going to be focusing on today are the three different types of muscular tissue and what are some of the differences between each type. So our three types are skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. Three major types of muscles and so for each one of these we're going to talk about where you can find them in the human body, what types of movement that they allow for, whether or not they're under our control, and how quickly this type of muscle tires out. So the first one that we're going to talk about and the one that you probably normally think of when you think of like your oh yeah your muscles, that's skeletal muscle. So it gets that name because these are the muscles that are attached to our and so the, these are what attach on our arm bones, our leg bones, the bones throughout our chest. The skeletal muscles are the ones that attach to them. So these guys are voluntary, meaning that we control our skeletal muscles. When I move my hand up and down and move my fingers and twist my head, that's because I'm focusing on doing that movement. It's not something that my brain does automatically. So whenever you're running or kicking something or even 
just sitting up straight and engaging your core muscles, that's happening because you want it to, because you're focusing and engaging those muscle groups. So muscle cells are sometimes also called muscle fibers and skeletal muscle has a lot of these little striped muscle fibers running all throughout the entire muscle. Skeletal muscle also is what's responsible for your quick response time to think so we can engage them really, really quickly, really fast. But part of the downside of that is because we're able to engage these and move them so rapidly, they fatigue easily. So we can't maintain contractions over a long period of time. When you're lifting really heavy weights, you can't just push it up over your head and then hold it there for the next hour or two. Your arms are gonna give out at some point. And that's because skeletal muscles fatigue relatively easily compared to our other muscle types. So these types of muscles tend to run out of energy and start feeling that burn. That's due to the fatigue happening in your skeletal muscles. So they can react really fast, we can move them really fastly, but because of that, they don't have the ability to keep up that movement for a long period of time. So skeletal muscles on our bones, we control how we move them, and we can move them really quickly, but they also tire out pretty fast. So skeletal muscles are what are responsible for our movement, and they do this by being attached to bones through something called a tendon. So your tendon is what actually attaches the muscle in your arm, for example, to your arm bones. Like if this was your humerus that we talked about the other week, it's in your arm, and this was your radius that connects to your thumb, this tendon right here is what connects the muscle to the radius on this side, and then there's going to be other tendons attaching to the humerus on this side. So these are how our skeletal muscles actually attach to our bones, our skeletal system. All right, muscle type number two, smooth muscle. So this is the muscle that makes up a lot of your organs. So like your stomach, your intestines, your um, liver, your kidneys, that any time that they're required to do any sort of muscular activity, they have muscles made out of this smooth muscle. So the digestive system uses a lot of this smooth muscle, like I was just saying. Um, in women, your uterus is a really important smooth muscle that controls how you give birth, when, if you're gonna give birth to a baby. And then also your blood vessels. So your arteries and veins have a little bit of muscle on the inside of them. That's kind of this part right here. And the muscle inside your arteries and veins is smooth muscle. So smooth muscle is different from skeletal muscle because smooth muscle is involuntary. You do not have direct control over the smooth muscles in your body, right? So whenever you swallow some food, you don't have to focus on using your muscles to push it down your esophagus and then move it through your digestive system and your intestines. That happens automatically. So involuntary is like automatic. So it's controlled by that autonomic nervous system. So the sympathetic and the parasympathetic that we talked about when we went over the nervous system, those are what control these smooth muscles. So involuntary, not under our control. You don't have control of the smooth muscles in your body. They just kind of work automatically. They respond to that, those nerves and do what they need to do without you even having to think about it. The plus side of this is that they can't react and move super quickly like our skeletal muscles. They're a lot more slow, but that means that they do not tire out easily, right? You can't feel your stomach muscle get really tired after digesting a big meal, right? They're more of the slow and steady kind of muscles. slow and steady. So they can just keep going and going and going. So they can't react super fast like our skeletal muscles. They can't move things along really quickly, but on the flip side, they're able 
to continuously do these slow and steady motions for hours and hours on end. All right, our third type of muscle is cardiac muscle. And if you're familiar with anatomy at all, you might recognize by the name that cardiac muscle is the muscle of your heart. So cardiac muscle is found only in your heart. No other places in your body have cardiac muscle. It's a specialized type of muscle cell that only exists in your heart. Your cardiac muscle, just like your smooth muscle, is involuntary, right? Luckily for us, we don't have to focus on keeping our heart beating, right? You don't have to think, okay, now beat and beat and beat and beat and beat, because that would just be too much for your brain to handle. So your heartbeat is essentially on autopilot, right? Your heart's gonna keep beating in your body pretty much no matter what. So one of the really cool things about the cardiac muscle is that all of the cells in the top part, in the atrium, and the bottom part, the ventricle, are fused together, meaning that they have a, what's called an all or none response. So when one cell contracts, they all contract together. And that's what allows them to get that really good push and push the blood through your heart and through the rest of your body by all the cells moving all at once. It also means, in terms of getting the cells activated, that your nerves just have to activate one cell in an area, and all the other cells will react at the same time as that initial cell. So we have this all or none response where either all the cells are contracting or none of them are. So just like our smooth muscle, they're also able to contract for long periods of time, like literally your entire life, right? Every single second of your life, your heart beats at least once, maybe a couple times if you're really stressed out or just did a lot of exercise. But it's got to keep going for your entire life, right? Hopefully 80 some odd years, every single second of every single day, your heart is beating. So hopefully your heart does not tire out easily. So just like the smooth muscle, we have an involuntary type of muscle cell that's under autom automatic control, and they're able to contract for a really long period of time. However, these guys, these cardiac muscle cells, are only in the heart and have this cool all or none response, where when one contracts, they all contract. So those are our three major types of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle that's attached to bones that we control and can react really quickly but tires out. Smooth muscle that's in our organs, goes slow and steady, doesn't really tire out easily, but we don't control it directly. It's controlled by the autonomic nervous system. And cardiac muscle in the heart, also involuntary under automatic control, also very good at maintaining its rhythm not tiring out, um, and has this cool um, all or none automatic response. So those are our three major types of muscle tissue. And the homework that you guys will be doing that I'll show you in a few minutes is based around separating out the differences and similarities between these different types of muscles. So the one major thing that I wanna talk about that muscles do is help us to move our body. So muscles move bones by pulling on them, right? Whenever your arm or your leg moves, it's because your muscle is pulling it in one way or the other way. So whenever your muscle contracts, it pulls one bone closer to another one. They're called the insertion bone and the origin bone. Don't really worry too much about that, but just know that when a muscle contracts, it pulls the bones together. And then movement occurs because we're in these two different bones and there is a joint like we just talked about before in the skeletal system between the two bones. So whenever the muscle causes a bone to move, it moves a certain way, like my arm will move this way and this way based on if this muscle is pulling it or if this muscle is pulling it. And it'll move based on the joint right here. 
So what kind of joint you have determines what sort of movement your muscle is gonna make. A lot of times, it's not just one muscle at a time that's moving things, but groups of muscles that work together in order to create certain movement. Like your thigh has tons of different muscles inside of it that all work together to keep your leg moving. So muscles can only, when they get activated, they contract. And as long as that nerve is activating them, they'll stay contracted. When the nerve stops, they'll still stay contracted until another muscle contracts somewhere else and causes that first one to relax. So muscles can't push bones out apart from each other. They can only pull. So if one muscle contracts to bring two bones together, another muscle is needed so that we can pull them apart. So like when you do a bicep curl where you're moving this arm back and forth, your bicep is what contracts to pull your arm in. And then the muscle down here is what contracts and pulls the arm out. So again, notice that these muscles are never pushing apart one another. It's just one is contracting while the other one relaxes. So this one down here gets stretched out because this one is contracting. Then I want this one to contract. So the top muscle relaxes. And so as this one contracts, my arm straightens out. So muscles always, always, always work in pairs. I'm gonna circle that a whole lot because that's super important to remember. You can't have just one muscle move a bone back and forth. We need two, at least two, usually a lot more. Like I mentioned before, we can have large groups of muscles, but at the very least you need two muscles, one to pull one direction and one to pull the opposite direction. So like I was just talking about, your bicep on top, when it contracts, it'll pull this arm in. And then when we stop activating our biceps and activate our triceps, the triceps contract. And the biceps relax, get stretched out by the fact that the tricep is relaxed contracting. And so now our bone that was up here before swings out to go straight. So when one contracts, the other relaxes, and that's what allows for back and forth movement. Again, muscles only pull, so you need an opposite muscle to pull back in the other direction if you want more than just one movement to occur. And that is all of the notes about the muscles. So hopefully that was pretty straightforward and pretty basic. The homework that I'm gonna have you guys do is a pretty basic worksheet where you're gonna be contrasting the different types of muscles and what some of their different characteristics are. So let's take a look at what that looks like really quick. So here is our muscle tissue worksheet. You can see that we have each of the three types of muscles up here at the top. We've got our skeletal muscles in this first column, smooth muscles in the second column, and cardiac muscles in this third column. And so what you guys are gonna do for this homework is it's very simple and straightforward. In each one of these boxes here, you're gonna put a check marks in the box each time that one of these types of muscle tissue matches up with these descriptions over here. So you're gonna see, look over and say, okay, which of these is it a voluntary muscle? Is skeletal muscle voluntary? Is smooth muscle voluntary? Is cardiac muscle voluntary? If it, the answer is yes, you put a check mark, or you could write yes, and if it is not, then you can just leave it blank, or if you want to, you can write in no as well. But at the very least, you have to put some sort of mark in each box that matches up with the description over here. So our descriptions are, is this type of, is one of these three types of muscles, which one of these is voluntary? 
Which of them are involuntary? Which of these muscles make up the heart? Which of these muscles are attached to bones? Which of them are found in the stomach? Which of these muscles can contract quickly but tire out? Which of these muscles act more slowly but don't tire out as well? And which of these have fused muscle cells that produce an all or none response? So for each one of those, you're gonna go through here and put a check mark in each box that matches with the description over here. So hopefully those notes in that worksheet are pretty straightforward. Please reach out to me if you have any questions or you want some further explanation. You can send me a text, you can send me an email, you can come to one of our Zoom meetings if you wanna to talk to me face to face and get a kind of in-person explanation, or you can write a question on the Google Classroom assignment and I'll do my best to answer any of these as soon as I see them. Once you're ready to turn in your worksheet, remember you can upload it directly to the Google Classroom, or you can write it down on a piece of paper, take a picture, and send that picture to my text number, or email that picture to me. Well, that's all for the muscular system today. Again, please reach out if you have any questions or need any more explanation, and I will see you guys for our next and final video here soon.